Hi, my name is Jan Demerjolo. Today I'm going to be demonstrating you what's the difference between the HD Insight on demand clustering and also HD Insight regular clustering. The difference is the money and time. Those are the two things that you need to keep in mind. Um, let's go to the HD Insight website and we can see how you can create an HD Insight that is totally your own and this is my Windows Azure uh, portal I come to HD Insight, I click on uh, create HD Insight and these are my options if I click on here I can even create a custom one um, here are your your data node sizes 1, 2, 4, 8 and here my subscription if I want I need to give a, password to the admin account on the the clusters and which uh, storage account do I need to use all of those are defined right in the screen now why it's important even if you choose one data node behind the scenes you are actually utilizing at least three A3 nodes three A3 uh, servers and here you can see the how much it costs so H3 is the lowest one uh, that you can get in terms of HD Insight instances and it costs, if you run it for a month, it costs you 238 bucks, roughly 250 bucks. Um, so if you run three of them, then it, this is going to cost you $750. Um, if you run 724 for a month. Why it is coming like that? It is because of this particular fact. So, when you run an HD Insight cluster, you will at least have two data nodes, uh, two head nodes, and at least one worker uh, node, uh, data node. So that is what you choose over here. How many data nodes do you want? But it doesn't tell you behind the scenes. Oh, I'm also going to provision these two head nodes. Um, if you create let's say um, eight different nodes at the total you will be creating ten nodes so just keep that that calculation in mind it is a little weird and it may put you a little bit off because of the fact that they cost really high um, if you start to add up those numbers and look, since we're over here uh, what are the other options that you can choose in order to once you go in and um, decide to use HD Insight um, and you'd like to have your own cluster and there are many reasons to have it uh, what are your options so you can go from A3 to A7 the main difference is number of cores and number of RAMs um, and these sizes that are allocated and as you can see the price increases su pretty substantially and also what you can do is you can even go for an SSD so that is going to make your HD inside clusters quite fast um, if you really want to run um, high-speed HD insights uh, using Spark for instance that's what would, I would recommend but just even just one of them is going to cost you two to, um, about two thousand dollar a month. So think about running this thing with ten nodes clusters, and it's going to cost you twenty thousand dollar a month. So be aware of those costs and then work accordingly. That's what I would recommend. And you can do the calculations um, by yourself. And there's a calculator, I guess. At Microsoft website so this is one way of creating a cluster um, going through this particular uh, website and you create your own clusters and everything is great now the second way in which ADF is involved Azure Data Factory is involved is pretty slick actually let's say I have a, a pipeline that requires an HD inside cluster I can tell this pipeline this particular pipeline hey uh, use the HD Insight that I already have, which is called Bring Your Own Clusters, BYOC, or um, HDI On Demand, HD Insight On Demand. Um, you can use that technology as well. What does that mean? 
so here's my link source that's for the on-demand links uh, on-demand HDI I define the, the name of the HDI and I say hey the type is going to be HD inside on-demand link source this is the regular HD inside link source it's called HD inside BYOC link source bring your own uh, cluster and here I need to give the URI of my clusters and give the password and the login name plus the link service name but here it is a little bit different here I just say HDI HD Insight On Demand Link Service this is the link service that um, I'm going to be using or the type I'm sorry the type of the cluster that I'm going to be using and here I define my cluster size which is going to be four this is four worker nodes so as a total I will have six nodes uh, I define the container which uh, HD Insight is going to put its own files in and here's another cool factor that you need to be aware of time to live let's say I have uh, one pipeline over here and then I have a bunch of other pipelines that are sequential to this pipeline so once I create this this HD insight depend upon what's the value of this uh, this time and time period my HD inside cluster can be utilized throughout my whole data factory operations um, what this particular uh, attribute means how long the HD inside cluster is going to be active before it is just deleted so if you set it to five minutes what's going to happen is after this operation is completed you will have five minutes to run your next pipeline that requires HD inside uh, on demand clustering. So, if you have two pipelines that, uh, that is in need for HD inside and they are sequential and they run within five minutes of each other, then you can just use a single HD inside on demand cluster and be done with it. You don't need to go through the, the operation of recreating an HD inside cluster. Why it's uh, really important because it takes real time to create one HD inside cluster, usually 25 to 30 minutes. So if you don't want to wait, you have two options: either you increase this number, or you bring your own cluster, which means you have to pay a little bit more money to Microsoft. Uh, the, the next parameter is the version. You can select different versions of the HD inside and here you can see the versions if you come to custom and these are the versions that you can select different types of Hadoop versions 2.4, 2.6 um, I think right now the default is 3.1 which is using the Hadoop 2.4 so depend upon what you want it is available and then the last thing is you set the, the link service um, name that is going to use in order to access to this particular container uh, so what is the difference between this particular one and uh, the bring your own cluster it is going to be different in terms of executing the job what is going to happen when I click on the, the, the slicers right now I didn't set it but what is going to happen when I set the, the slicers is I need to wait about 25 minutes to 30 minutes just to get the HD inside cluster up and running um, once it is done then I'm good to go the the rest of the chain if I had some more pipelines and if I had set the um, time to live property accordingly then uh, it would have used just the same HD inside cluster um, until nobody uses it that particular cluster for that period of time and once that period of time is passed then the cluster is deleted so you don't have to pay anything anymore so it's a really nice feature um, but just keep that in mind it takes a little bit of time and you define it right here in your pipeline and by the way this is the new UI for um, HD inside and uh, in my in my script as you can see I just define certain parameters but 
but in, if you come to the, the UI of um, Azure Data Factory and click on the one of the objects, you are going to see all the rest of the, the options that you can edit. There are lots of configurations that you can do um, to an on-demand um, HD Insight cluster. As I said, you get the money, but you lose some time. So depend upon your situation, um, you can go either way. Anyway, so that is about it for today. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to write it to me at cemd at abacusdms.com or you can just write down uh, your comments underneath this video. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye.